And that's a scary power to have. And I want people anywhere in the world, especially in places like Iran and Afghanistan, to know, you know, it's very dangerous to let someone else to make decisions for your life, especially when they have guns in their hands. You've always you you know you've maintained that you always wanted to leave Iran. What was the main precipitant for what for you wanting to leave the country of your birth? I just want freedom, I, and I still want more freedom. You know, anywhere I go, I, I, freedom is so fundamental for me. It's even more important than democracy for me. I want people to be as free as possible, not only me but anyone else. Whether it's what you're gonna put in your body or what religion you want to practice or so, so you're one of those people like we had a, a guest on a, a few weeks ago named Maso Rahbari, who's a, um, a fitness instructor and a, and a, a Instagram influencer who's also in London now. You know, for her, being in Iran felt like she was in a cage. That That's the way it felt for you as well? Exactly. Exactly. That's how it was. And uh, I mean, when when you are in the cage, you don't know a lot about the outside world, but you know you are in a cage, you know? And once you're liberated, then you realize, okay, these are the freedoms I hadn't had when I was in it, that case. Is it ironic that you you didn't really love Iran growing up there, but that you end up dedicating your life, so far at least, outside of Iran, to broadcasting to people inside Iran? <laughs> I mean, it's not that I didn't love Iran and I, or, or I don't love Iran. I, I mean, I like Iran like many other countries. I'm not patriotic, to be uh, fair, uh, not to Iran, not to any other country. I mean, my parents happened to have sex in Iran and I became Iranian. They could be in Singapore. I would be a Singaporean now. Uh, <laughs> so, I mean, obviously I have history there. You know, I grow up there. So I have some attachment to that country and that's the language I speak. So if I if I if I could speak Japanese, maybe I would broadcast in to Japan. Uh, but uh, I think it makes it even more interesting because Iran is such an isolated country and I have this opportunity to bring the word to uh, many Iranians. I think it makes it more more interesting than broadcasting to to the UK, for instance, where people have access to free media anyways. I think you're being, I, I don't totally believe you. I, I don't believe that it would be the same for you if you spoke Taiwanese to broadcast to Taiwan. I, I think that there's some level of investment in there for you. Um, maybe especially because you felt like you had to leave this country. Uh, or am I going too far? Uh, am I thinking that there's an emotional and psychological element to this that, that you don't feel? You might be right. You might be right. I mean, maybe one of the reasons is I want to show to the people inside the country that, you know, there can be an alternative, uh -huh. you know, the world can be a better place. And I mean, I tend not to compare governments with each other. I hate when people do that. Oh, look how great the UK government is comparing to your government. I'm, I mean, I'm a skeptical towards all governments around the world. Obviously, the Western ones, the ones that are democratic are better. But nevertheless, governments all around the world, they are the only entities that have the legal monopoly of using force. And that's a scary power to have. And I want people anywhere in the world, especially in places like Iran and Afghanistan, to know, you know, it's very dangerous to let someone else to make decisions for your life especially when they have guns in their hands mm -hmm. so just speak for yourself try to make some changes and be more free and there is other ways of living than the ones that your government is portraying for you